Hi, my name is Brandon Wiley, and I'm the founder and president of Global Ed Leader. Uh, I'd like to talk to you today about my passion for global education. Um, and when I talk about global education, what I really mean are two things. First, um, what schools do to help students uh, understand their place in the world and to learn about the world. Um, that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin for me around global education is how we can learn with and from the world about educational practices that work for kids, all kids. Uh, the world in which we're preparing students for, we, we really don't know five years, ten years from now what the world is going to look like. So it's incumbent upon us as school teachers and leaders to think proactively about how to prepare kids for that world. Uh, so the work that I've been doing is working with schools uh, all around the United States and the world to help them think more strategically about how to prepare kids for the world, and specifically for them to develop their global competence. And what I mean by global competence is uh, their ability to investigate the world, to investigate globally significant issues and give a real purpose to the learning, to the content that they're learning. But to also understand perspectives, both their own perspective and the perspective of others based on their culture or their geography um, and how they think about the world. And in addition to investigating the world and understanding these different perspectives, we want students to be able to communicate effectively about the ideas in which they're learning and then lastly, that they take action. So very often I've heard folks talk about students being the leaders of tomorrow. I actually hate that. I want them to be the leaders of today. The, the global issues that we're facing as a, in a, as a society, we need young, nubile minds to help us solve those problems. So I think schools can be very strategic about ways in which they create structures and curriculum and learning opportunities that allow kids to engage in meaningful ways with the world around them. Uh, through project-based learning, through experiential learning. These are ways in which we can give learning relevance and engage them in ways that are not sort of rote in what we see in a lot of schools today. Uh, to my mind, this idea of preparing students to be globally competent is actually a moral imperative. All students deserve the right to have a globally focused education. This has been reserved in many places for a select few, for those that come from affluent backgrounds, or have access uh, that others don't have. And I think we have to break down those barriers. All of our kids are going to enter into a world that is growingly uh, global. Uh, we know this for sure. We don't know much about the future, but we know a few things. We do know that it's going to be much more global. We do know that technology is going to play a greater role, and that increasingly they're going to be working and interacting with people of different cultures. So how are we responsive to that as a school? That's a question that I, that I think about very often. And in particular, I'm working a lot with school leaders because I think this is a, this is a leadership issue. We need uh, leaders of schools and districts and organizations around the world to think about this equity issue. How do we provide opportunities for, for all kids? So I've boiled it down into a couple different strategies or, or ways in which um, schools can do this work. The first is this idea of having a common vision for why it's important for our kids to be globally competent. Whether it's a school or an organization, we want to have a this shared vision of the importance of our kids being globally prepared. So you can frame this around uh, the economy, that we're you know, preparing kids for a global economy. You can think about it in terms of the, the world issues that we're facing and that we all need to be better educated about them. Uh, I like to think of it also just about people being happy in life, right? The more connected you are to the world, the more you can take advantages of the opportunities around you, the more fun you're going to have, the, the more uh, you know, happy opportunities you're going to have. But as leaders, we have to lead this discussion within our organizations about why a globally focused education would make a difference for kids and is important. That's sort of the first step. The second step is, is really also having a shared definition of success. Too often, at least in the United States, we're defining success by test scores. And I find this a little bit troubling. I think success in schools can be defined in a variety of ways, both in the classroom as well as uh, on the athletic field or on the stage. And so having a commonly held definition of what success looks like, uh, what we want our students to know and to be able to do and even just to be as people, uh, I find very often a lot of schools don't have this shared uh, vision or uh, articulation of what success looks like. So if we've been able to make the case for why global education matters, uh, we've been able to define what success is, now we can be strategic about upgrading our curriculum and thinking about new ways of teaching. So I'll give you an example that I think is, is pretty easy for, for most teachers, especially, to glom onto. Um, so if, let's say, we're going to look at our curriculum and try to find new ways to globalize our curriculum and to expose our students to the world, one way we can do that is by giving students choice. 
right? So thinking about when we're designing curriculum, where can we be purposeful about designing choice, both in what students learn, but how they learn it, and how they're going to demonstrate that learning. Too often we don't actually give students choice in those ways. But if we can do that, we can certainly engage them more deeply. Another way to think about enhancing the curriculum would be to think about, um, are we providing authentic learning opportunities? In other words, are we asking kids to do things that people in the real world actually do? Or are we still asking them to do the shoebox diorama? I'm not sure about you, but I've never been asked by my boss uh, to do a shoebox diorama to show my, my proficiency. So why would we ask kids in high school to do that? Uh, so if we've done those things, we can also think about how do we bring in globally significant issues into our curriculum? So if I'm teaching a math class in statistics, how can I use a global issue to frame the discussion, to give examples, and to really give purpose to what the students are learning? And finally, there's this idea around exhibition. Who are we doing the learning and demonstrating the learning for? Too often in our classrooms, students are being asked to demonstrate their learning just for the teacher. If we can broaden that notion that they're, they're creating work, for example, for the world, whether it's on a blog or a, a podcast or all the different ways in which we can connect students with one another these days, uh, it gives them a whole new purpose for why they're, why they're doing the work. Um, so just those four examples, uh, if we were to look at curriculum through those lenses, are ways in which we can broaden the way we connect students and give them a little bit more of a, of a global perspective. And then finally, I think um, two other pieces that I think help think about how to globalize is around how we're using technology. Increasingly, we're seeing where schools are actually being locking down technology uh, and are not trusting students, in some cases not trusting the teachers as well. And I think we need to kind of blow up that myth uh, that, that students won't use technology appropriately. We need to create open opportunities for them to collaborate online. Uh, for them to be able to do projects with students and for teachers to collaborate with teachers in other countries. Uh, and that technology facilitates this like no other time in our history. Uh, and so the last notion is really around this around uh, creating global leaders in the form of our teachers. Many teachers aren't comfortable thinking about a global curriculum because they don't feel themselves that they're globally competent. So increasingly, again, with technology, I think we can bring teachers together to share and to talk and to try to solve some of the problems that plague us uh, here in the United States and around the world. Many of these issues are the same, which again brings me back to the, the second, the other side of the coin about learning with and from the world. Too often we're put in a sort of a competitive ranking sort of mentality. Uh, things like the PISA exam, while very interesting, gives us very valuable data, unfortunately people in some corners are using that for comparison and for rankings instead of saying what can we learn from other countries? How can we do this in a way to make our practice better? So uh, again, just to sort of summarize, I really think schools and districts can be much more strategic about putting structures and uh, practices in place that allow teachers to engage in meaningful ways with each other to connect with the world. And if they're able to do that, then I think their students will be able to as well. And at the end of the day, our goal ultimately, I think, is to prepare students that can communicate effectively, can appreciate cultures of different uh, backgrounds, different religions, and really just to be more respectful of the world around them. We need them uh, to develop these skills and dispositions, not only for the careers that they're going to have, but just to be contributing uh, citizens in our world. Mm -hmm.